Welcome back, Zero K fans, to another exhibition match. This is Shadow Fury 3 bringing a match between Randy and Google Frog on Archer's Valley. Let us begin. So, Randy starting in the southeast corner of the map, and Google Frog in the northwest corner. This is Archer's Valley, a map I do not believe I have ever showcased. As you can see, rather hilly, very focused on. Although it's relatively flat in between the hills, it's not perfectly flat, I believe, but it is relatively flat. We do see Life Eagles coming from Randy, we see Shieldbot coming from Google Frog, and bear in mind, these rocks are actually bot pathable. The red just means they come up slowly, purple means it's unpathable. So, there's a slight terrain advantage for Google Frog right now, but the thing is, flat maps, or at least maps with flatness in them, still allow for vehicle play. Even if there are hills, there's a slight terrain advantage for bots, especially spider bots, especially if it's really hilly, but vehicles can still go through. and. I would actually have to double check. I'm pretty sure that this is bot pathable. I mean, lots of parts of it are definitely bot pathable. So there's a lot that can be done there, but the thing is, as long as there's a flat path to your opponent's base, vehicles can at least be viable. Not necessarily the absolute best option in every case, but definitely viable. And as we can see, Randy harassing out, getting rid of one of the metal extractors from Google Frog. Google Frog hasn't quite gone to Randy's base yet. Randy does have a Scorcher set up. We saw last game, Randy really likes his Scorchers, and it looks like this game is going to be no exception. Google Frog, on the other hand, going for pretty quick ban. This just for the early raid. Probably, I'm going to guess he's going to go for a typical shield game that is early bandits into Thug Outlaw Felon. Though, on a map this large, he may instead opt for either Rogue or just going heavy on bandits. Heavy on bandits, maybe some Rogues to support. He is definitely starting heavy on bandits. And it just an interesting little interface thing. Notice Google Frog is going for infinite build, while Randy is going for large number of units in queue. I'm pretty sure Randy was a Total Annihilation player before he started playing any spring games, including 0k. And those didn't have an infinite repeat function. You did have the ability to hold control and shift, and you'd add 50 units to a queue at a time. And that's what he's opted to do. Interesting habits there. Well, on the other hand, Google Frog, of course, being a developer of 0k, has become quite used to the interface as it currently stands. Interesting little quirk. Anyway, Google Frog definitely taking advantage of the terrain. So you can see his current vision... It, oh, right, he's player two. His current vision is... Not bad. I mean, he does have bandits set up to scout, though most of them are on the low ground, so the vehicles can catch them. That is, Randy's vehicles can catch them. And Randy's vehicles are not actually completely out of the loop on this terrain, but they are largely unable to get up it. As you can see, like I said, a purple color... Well, purplish-red color, that means it's completely impathable. Or unpathable. Google Frog is going heavy bandits. That's exactly what he's planning on doing. No sign of what he's going to do past this. Like I said, it's hard to really get shield bots working on a map like this without being well set up beforehand. Vehicles being quite a bit faster have an easier time getting around, though admittedly, higher level vehicles, more expensive vehicles, have a harder time with this. And slashers as well. As we saw last game, Randy does love his slashers as he loves his scorchers. Which, actually, I'm not sure if that's a Total Annihilation thing. Slashers, I don't believe we're a Total Annihilation unit, but Scorchers are similar, apparently, to a unit called a Flash. Which may very well be what Randy is going off of, but at this point, Randy's played enough games. 2300 LO, he's played enough games to know what he's doing. He's not just going from old Total Annihilation habits. At any rate, Google Frog able to defend against the Slasher, or sorry, Scorchers, but with some cost. Definitely not for free, losing Bandits in the process, though Bandits are... A bit cheaper. They're about two-thirds the cost of slashers. Sorry, of scorchers. Actually, they're about half the cost of slashers. And not easy to get through. And it looks like we don't see anything coming up yet. No real changes, although convicts are being built, helping to assist. Google Frog does have 15 metal income right now, so he can assist that factory without losing out too much. It looks like he's actually... He is spending his money elsewhere, though. He does have his commander building up defenses around the map. That is using up some of his resources away from the factory. And also getting attacked very slightly. There's a commander getting attacked. It looks like... Well, not really that relevant. Randy's commander apparently getting attacked by a bandit to no real avail. Nothing is coming from that. Just point out, let's see. Google Frog is his morph beam laser energy cell. The rather typical morph while Randy, once again, E-cell with no weapon. Going for the cheaper metal version, and Randy assaulting him from the west side of the map. And at the same time, we have Google Frog attempting an assault along the east side of the map, but his bandit getting destroyed by the Scorcher, no problem. And the Scorcher's coming up. Scorcher bandit fight. Convict very nearly destroyed in the process, able to escape up the hill, but Google Frog is really having to deal with 
the mobility of vehicles. He's using the terrain nicely, but it's tough. It is definitely difficult for him to get around this. And once again, because getting shield bots shut up, especially the Thug Outlaw Felon Balls that are often used, can be difficult on a map like this, especially getting them all together. If he manages to pull it off, it could be very powerful, but walking into the opponent's base is going to take a couple minutes, and Randy will have plenty of time to react by the point by the time that happens. However, that terrain advantage is adding a lot of... Did I turn map marks off? Anyway, that terrain advantage is adding a lot of... Just a lot of cost-effectiveness on Google Frog's side. He is able to set up defenses in useful positions that are hard to counter, and getting some raids in as well while Randy's units are out. Nice to getting rid of two metal extractors and pulling down Randy's economic advantage. He's had an economic advantage actually most of this game, but it is being pulled down a bit, and one of these masons about to go down the bandit. The one bandit attacking it, wisely pulling back as the Scorchers come towards it, and Defender getting rid of that bandit. Not able to get rid of that solar collector, not the hugest deal. The biggest deal is the metal, extra the metal extractor right there. At the same time, northwest side of the map, we see that there is... A bit of a Scorcher Bandit fight, which is going for the Scorchers, getting rid of another Metal Extractor, and keeping Google Frog behind Randy. Like I said, despite the hills on this map, vehicles can do just fine due to the fact that it's mostly flat. Or at least flat enough. But, nice use of a landmine by Google Frog. And another one, Roach Landmine, both sides of his base. Very nicely done to keep Randy right out of there. As Scan the rest of that. Looks like there are no other roach landmines at the moment, but more are forthcoming, I'm sure. Just see, Google Frog has none planned so far. Randy, on the other hand, still going primarily for Scorchers, getting up a Caretaker. And it looks like Randy has largely been just building up around the map with his metal. Not focusing a lot of his income into his base, focusing instead to expansion. While Google Frog has been focusing a lot of it into his factory, making sure he has production going as quickly as possible. Starting to group as bandits, looks like he's going for... Probably more powerful raids, possibly full-on assaults, but it's going to be a bit difficult. Scorchers, as we've seen before, do have a pretty easy time dealing with units, especially when they come in close. But we'll see the bandits are on move. They're not on fight, so they will not automatically kite out of there. They will instead just go where they are told. And it looks like where they're told is going to be going back, because Google Frog does not want to engage right now, and he's wise to do so. And there's another roach. Another roach being sent out, and a further roach being... And let's see, it's being set up right next to this metal extractor. In case some slashes come along that side. No further roaches up so far, but still, wherever they are, that's where Randy cannot easily be. Randy doesn't have any real minesweeper units. I don't believe Vehicle Factory does, honestly. Squirt, I mean, darts are fairly cheap. They can be, you can pass them around the map and try to find roaches that way. But Randy's not doing that. And other than that, it, like, shield bots have outlaws. Outlaws are a great minesweeper unit, or at least they used to be. They're still okay for it. They will detect the mines, but they won't kill them in one shot necessarily. However, with support, especially with felon support, mines are sweeped. They are just sweeped. Very easy to get around that. However, doesn't really matter. And Randy at this point has a 44, 44 medal to 19 medal from Google Frog, and even though his commander's actually taking a fair amount of damage, at the same time we do have a Scorcher Raid coming into the northwest, and attacks coming into the south as well, and it looks like I missed a really good battle. That... that was unfortunate. But the raid to the southwest is dealing some damage, but even then, Google Frog able to expand a little bit, able to harass quite a lot, but this bandit's gonna be going down to the defender. There it goes. Google Frog was paying attention there, but couldn't move it around in time. More roaches coming out to try to just consolidate what terrain Google Frog has taken, and at this point, Google Frog is about to set up what's gonna be one of the last few metal extractors that's I mean, okay, there's quite a few open metal extractors, a lot of which are inside Google Frog's territory, actually. He has gotten his border of his territory defined, but it's not half. He's got less than half the metal extractors on his side, and like I said, he has a 3 to 4 metal ratio compared to Randy. And doing a fax switch into air, I expect some phoenixes. I doubt shadows, but definitely phoenix phoenixes seem very likely at this point, because that would allow him to just tear apart these lines of units coming in. The Slashers are moving in. Randy going in for powerful assaults with the Slashers just to get rid of the defenses over a short period of time. Trying to get rid of them as quickly as possible. The Bandits are coming in at an off angle. They are not going for the... Well, they are going for the, the Slashers, but they are... No, they are retreating. Never mind. They were going for the Slashers from a nice cross angle, but they are not going to bother engaging. 
Not terribly unwise, the Scorchers here would have torn them to shreds if they had done so. The good call by Google Frog, but still, he is on the back foot and has been for some time. He's actually starting to catch up. He is successfully catching up, getting more metal extractors set up. Although Randy is, once again, continuing to construct his own metal extractors and looks like probably reclaiming his... No, definitely reclaiming. Got a fair amount of reclaim he can work with. A lot of Google Frog's units have been lost inside of Randy's base. And Randy looks like he's about to walk on top of a roach. Not quite, though. He's not aware of it, but he is also not walking on top of it. And another roach being set up right next to it. And the Scorcher is it going to get to the roach. It is getting to the roach. That roach able to take out three half the Scorchers go down to a roach kill. And the bandits are going to engage. They're going to take care of one of the Slashers, but the Scorchers are going to come in to try to deal with them. And not quite able to kill off that Scorcher, but the Slasher being pushed in. And the Scorchers getting destroyed by the other landmine. Nice placement by Google Frog there. And the last landmine is going to be wasted from the looks of it. No, that roach detected, however. Randy is aware of where that roach is, but he has not detonated it. So he can't be safe around it. And it looks like Faraday has actually been built. An EMP turret. That's a little bit surprising, but not useless, that's for sure. Making sure these Ravagers... Actually, keeping these Ravagers stuck in a bit of a hole there. While at the same time, roaches... Oh, no, not roaches. Never mind. Stiletto's coming in. Going for the disarm instead, trying to get just disarm all of these scorchers and looks of it, and then attack after they're unable to fire back. Note that if you haven't been watching in a while, stilettos have been changed, so that's not EMP. There's a new mechanic called disarm that's like EMP, but a little bit like EMP was what we saw here, where the the units are completely unable to act whatsoever. Disarm just means they're unable to fire. Shadow coming in, however, getting a bit of damage onto this leveler here, and a second shadow coming in to finish it off. Well, no change really to shield bots right now. Mostly, looks like the investment is into infrastructure. And Google Frog has gotten parity on economy. Building a heavy tank factory as well, a bit closer. But Google has parity on economy. It's a little bit surprising, actually, given that most of the... Yeah, most of the resource processors are apparently belonging to Randy right now. However, Archer's Valley is not a symmetric map. But yeah, Randy has most of the resource processors. I'm a little bit surprised Google Frog's managed to get parity. However, more importantly, Randy coming in with a very powerful attack here. And another landmine goes off, but not at the right time, unfortunately, for Google Frog. Not able to get rid of most of Randy's forces. Now, Randy, on the other hand, gone for gunships. And another roach, but no real kills there. Randy gone for gunships. And what other factories does he have right now? He has the gunship factory. He has the light vehicle factory. And that's about it. But a bunch of Black Dons and Tridents coming in. The try is to get rid of the shadows that are going around the map. Blackdawn and Banshee to get rid of everything else. Google Frog is going to have a lot to deal with right now. And Randy getting some reclaim in finally to get... Well, I shouldn't say finally. But he's getting some reclaim in. Getting a, his economic advantage once again. And another roach to deal with what he can. But still, even with that... This is a... Well... This is being tough for Google Frog. Also, Google Frog pointing out in the chat that EMP turrets are really powerful, and yes, as we can see, they are in fact really powerful. I just, you just don't see them a whole lot in 1v1. It's actually a little bit surprising, given how powerful they in fact are, especially now that EMP is not so ubiquitous. Given that most of the traditional EMP units, like stilettos and, which this one's going down right now, right into the shield block factory, stilettos and racketeers and... Everything but really ticks and Faraday's, and a couple other units as well, have been switched over to disarm damage from EMP damage. Now it's less ubiquitous. The turret is definitely more powerful, or more useful, but it doesn't matter at this point. Google Frog looks like he's going to be losing a shield bot factory. Now the heavy tank factory, I am curious what's happening with that. And it looks like some Reapers have been built up. Reapers and Pillagers, though, at the same time, Banshee's coming in to deal with this. The Faraday doing a good job just stunning them one at a time, but even then they are going down faster than the Banshees are. No real anti-air has been set up, and, well, the Razor's Kiss, I mean, there has been that, but even with that, especially since it is open and attacking right now, it is not defending itself, and Google Frog's commander about to go down, about to blow up, and about to kill everything around it, or heavily damage it. The Razor's Kiss actually does have a, hell of, have a lot of health even without that, but Google Frog throwing in the towel, and that is game. Google Frog getting beaten by basically economy at this point. Randy really just took over the entire west side of the map. I, I was questioning why shield bots, and it would seem that yes, why shield bots.
So I will be back in a couple minutes with another game. Double check. It is... Oh, and also... Small little thing. It looks like Slashers... Slashers were, in fact, a original Total Annihilation unit. Google Frog just pointed me to some links on... Yeah, with Total Annihilation. It looks like they were, in fact, a unit that existed. As did Scorchers, though they were called Instigators at the time. But Slashers w did exist with the same name. Anyway, next game is going to be with Daywalker on Melt. So stay tuned. I'll have that shortly.